Hey, thanks for joining me again in this weekly study. So far, we have looked at six aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, and today we move to number seven called faithfulness. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, how about faithfulness? What in the world is it? The dictionary defines it as to follow a commitment regardless of the difficulty. It's the idea of being trustworthy, uh, dependable, and consistent. And as with all things, faithfulness begins with God. In fact, he's the epitome of faithfulness. In Psalm chapter 100, the psalmist says, The Lord is good. His faithfulness endures forever. His faithfulness endures to all generations. So every time we see a rainbow, we're reminded of God's faithfulness, that he keeps his promise. Every time we pick up the Bible and read, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass. We know God is being faithful. Every time we walk through tough stuff and we read verses like, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We are reminded when we read those kinds of things of God's faithfulness. So God is faithful, and then watch this. He deposits the fruit of the Spirit in us so that we too can be faithful. So let me give you three quick characteristics of all faithful pre, uh, people, and these are not all inclusive by any means. The first one is this, faithful people always value their time. Or another way to say it is, faithful people use their time, unfaithful pay, people abuse their time. Paul said in Ephesians 5, be very careful how you live, not like unwise people, but as wise people making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Listen, managing our time is a must if we truly ever want to get a consistent handle on faithfulness in the way we live. And by the way, do you know the two biggest enemies of time management? Regret and worry. Think about it. When we regret our past, we waste huge amounts of time wishing we could change some things that can never be changed. When we worry about our future, we waste many precious moments building bridges we may never have to cross. Or this one, the when-then mindset. Well, when the kids get out of school, then I can take it easy. Well, when I get a little more money, then I can be happy. When I get the bills paid... Then we can really do some living. Hey, remember this. God knows what is going on in your life and schedule. He really does. In fact, He knows it better than you. So what must we do? We talk with God. We tell Him about it. Lord, help me know what to add and cut out of my life. Jesus, be my time manager. So faithful people value their time. Secondly, faithful people are loyal to their family. Driving around with a friend several years ago, uh, he was explaining everything about his brand new pickup truck and how it was a four-wheel drive and what four-wheel drive meant. And I, and I just asked him, why do you have four-wheel drive? You, uh, and, and his response was, well, you never know when you're going to go off-road. And in three seconds, bam, he turns sharp right down through a ditch up over the ditch, and out through a pasture we go. And then he looked at me with a smile and said, See what I mean? Guess what? Family relationships are not always a smooth interstate experience. Would you agree? One pastor said it this way, Sometimes relationships go off-road, with the tires spinning and the mud flying, and you wind up in a ditch where it takes a four-wheel drive to get you out. Can you relate to that? But here's the good news. The good news is if you have a genuine commitment to one another in a relationship, if you are determined to love each other, watch, faithfully, you will soon move beyond that off-road detour back onto the smooth highway where you can turn off the four-wheel drive and turn on the cruise control. But here's the problem. Too many today, when they hit these off-road deals, when things get a little dicey and the tires start spinning in the relationship, too many want to just ditch the car and switch to another model, hoping that the new model will keep, uh, keep them on smooth roads and won't take them into a ditch. 
How many of you know that doesn't always work? Because often the one ditching the car in that relationship, the one ditching is equally part of the problem to begin with. And until that person gets their issues and weaknesses taken care of, they, they will never find lasting success in a relationship. Or, or this, here, here's another thing that we do when we get in trouble, when a relationship's not going well. We just keep on driving, and we never ask for help. We go off-road, refuse to four-wheel drive it, in other words, refuse to work at it, and we just sit there, month after month, year after year, sinking deeper and deeper into the muck and the mire until we drown in a muddy relational mess. Listen, that is so crazy. If you have car trouble on your way to wherever you go next, if you're, if you're out there driving and you have car trouble, uh, you wouldn't do something like that, would you? That analogy I just gave you? No. You'd get on your cell phone and you'd call AAA or you'd text a friend, hey, can you help me? I'm stuck. I broke down. I, I need help. Listen, do the same thing in your relationships because faithfulness says, I am not going to bail the first time we go off-road and I get stuck off-road, I promise that I, will not, uh, that I will get help and I will not give up. One last thing today. Faithfulness uh, or faithful people keep their word. Have you ever told someone you'd call them back later and then you didn't? Or did you ever say, hey, the check's in the mail before it was in the mail? Or did you ever promise to pray for someone and then you forgot to? I used to do that all the time and I started carrying a notepad until I got iPhones where I could write a person's name down and remember it. All those things speak to faithfulness, really. And, and the truth is, we have to just keep our word. That's all. Sometimes as a parent, for instance, in a moment of weakness, we make promises to kids just to kind of get them out, out of our hair. Did you ever do that? I don't have to ask you. I know good and well you've done it. You're busy doing some kind of task. You just have to get through with it. And you kind of shush them aside and say, listen, we'll play in just a moment. Your promise, you, you promise them something that really doesn't even register in your mind because you're busy. But weeks later, you discover that the kids never forget anything ever. When you tell them you're going to do something, they don't forget it ever. In fact, when you say, well, honey, we might maybe perhaps one of these days do what you want, they interpret that to mean we will definitely be doing what I want and we're going to be doing it today. That's what my dad said. That's what my mom said. I mean, that's just a kid. Proverbs 20 says, don't trap yourself by making a rash promise to God and only later counting the cost. In other words, it's always easier to get in than it is to get out. By the way, did you know one of the biggest problems in parent-child relationships is resentment? It is. And do you know the number one cause of resentment? Broken promises. Isn't that something? Ecclesiastes 5.5 5 says, It is better to not make a promise than to make one and break it. Now think about that. Let's say in terms of a marriage. Let's go back in the marriage. In, in a wedding ceremony, a bride and groom exchange rings as a symbol of their vows or promise that they are making, Right? A promise to be faithful to each other for the rest of their lives. And guess what? That promise to be faithful is not just about adultery. The truth is that for one to be unfaithful, all they have to do is let something else take preeminence in that relationship. And that can be anything. Some have a love affair with sports. Some have a love affair with their work, with their career. Some have a love affair with a hobby or, or whatever. And how many of you know that does not speak well to faithfulness? And it always leads to problems. So if you want to develop the quality of faithfulness, honor your word. And the cool thing about all of this is, God. here's what God does, like with other parts of the fruit of the Spirit. It is that He asks us to be faithful. And then he downloads faithfulness inside of us in the person of Jesus, which gives us the power to bring what is in us out of us. How cool is that? 
Psalm 37, 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do this. Because you have committed your way to Him, that verse says, because you've committed your way to Him, don't fret. It is God's power that brings it to pass. That's good news. Amen? God at work in me, giving me any and everything I need to be faithful to Him and to those He has given me. Hey, I hope this teaching helps you today. We'll continue in this study for the next couple of weeks, and I hope you'll be looking forward to joining me. Share this on your social media timelines. If I could help you, if I could answer a question for you or pray for you about anything, contact me at mhaily777 at gmail. Or you can just go on our website, site, newdaychurchbrandon.org, and send me a message there. Hope you have a great week. I'll be praying for you. Bye-bye.